Okay. So yesterday we had discussed when a charged particle is fired inside a magnetic field at some angle which was 90 degree. I told you that the path that the, that the charged particle will follow will be a circular path. Correct? Now today we have a charged particle but this charged particle is fired at some angle other than 90 degree inside a uniform magnetic field. So what happens here? That is our that was pending from yesterday. So I will first of all take it to some other thing. See for example, this is my coordinate axis. Okay, This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis and this my dear is the z-axis. Is that fine? And the magnetic field here that we have, say for example, the magnetic field is cross. Okay, that means the magnetic field in this region is inwards. Is that clear? And I am firing a particle like this with velocity v at some angle with the horizontal. Or let me keep it more simpler. Let's not think about this. I can just keep it like this. See, I will keep the magnetic field only along the x-axis. That would be much easier. So the particle is being fired at some angle, at some angle with the magnetic field. Clear? Now if you know the concept of vectors, if someone asks, what will happen this time? So what we have to understand is, what are the various components of this velocity? So if you talk about the components of velocity, we will have a component like this, which is V parallel, correct? And this will be V cosine of theta, correct? And then we will have a perpendicular component, V perpendicular, which will be V sine of theta, isn't it? Now you have to think in a different way. You have to understand that this particle has two velocities. One is V sine theta, other is V cos theta. Now V sine theta is perpendicular to magnetic field. So I told you yesterday, when a particle is fired perpendicular to the magnetic field, what happens? it obtains a circular path, isn't it? So let us check where will the particle go because of this V sine theta, because this is perpendicular to the magnetic field, okay? So let us try to obtain the path of the particle. So the velocity is up, velocity is up, and the magnetic field is here, yes? The V perpendicular is up, and the magnetic field, V perpendicular is up, and the magnetic field is here, correct? So we want to check where will this where will this uh, charge experience the force and let the charge be plus q to positive charges. Okay, it's something like this. So I tried to fire it with some velocity at an angle of theta, but there are two components: the v perpendicular and the v parallel. V perpendicular is up with respect to the magnetic field. Now let us try to evaluate the force. You know that force because of this will be. QVB, correct? Because that will be the maximum force. And that force has a direction. What will be the direction? For the velocity is up, magnetic field is here. So when you try to curl it, your thumb is going inwards, correct? So that means the particle which wanted to go up won't go up. It will be directed inwards. So will it form a circle like this? Yes. Because see, it wants to go up. It wants to go up. But the force is inwards, that means the particle will go like this, correct? So that means it will try to revolve. That means our circular path is going to be something like this, correct? Is it clear? But the particle has this component of velocity, V cos theta, which tries to pull the particle along the magnetic field because on due to this particle, there is no force. Force is zero. Because of this particle, the force is maximum charge times velocity times the magnetic field. This force causes it to go in a circular path. But this V cos theta will ask this particle, no, don't go only like this. Also, you have to come forward. So what is going to happen? See, the circular path and it will go forward as well. So what is the motion like? Yes, it is, it is the combination of circular motion, circular motion, okay, which is because of this force 
and then we have a velocity component which is v cosine of theta which is trying to take the particle along the magnetic field so that is translatory motion isn't it translatory motion so we have these two motions going on and therefore we will have a resultant motion and that motion will be a helical path is that fine? That means what will happen? The particle will not go like, will not only form the circle, but that circle will also go forward. Is that clear? So this is what is going to happen. See? This will happen. Is it clear? Is it clear? Trans Translatory motion. Translatory because V cosine theta wants to drag it along the magnetic field. The V sine theta, which is perpendicular, we already know when the velocity is perpendicular to magnetic field, the path followed is circular. So it will try to form a circular path, but we had to check the direction. So how did we check the direction? We did, we did the, we used the right hand rule. Velocity is up, magnetic field is here, V cross V, thumb is going in. So the particle which wanted to go like this will go like this. Okay, this is the circular path. But V cosine theta will bring the circle forward. So there is circle along with translatory motion. Therefore, we will have what path? The helical path. Is this clear? Is this clear? Yes. So this is the concept of a particle which is being fired at some angle. So there will be two forces. This force will be zero because this velocity is along the magnetic field. This force will be Q, V, B, sine of theta. This will be the maximum force. And due to this force, we have, we have circular motion. And due to this velocity, due to this velocity, we have translatory motion. And therefore, the combination of these two gives us what? A helical path. Is this clear? Is this clear? So yes, this is the diagram. Now see here the magnetic field is like this okay like this the particle was being fired but then the particle obtained a helical path but it is going along the magnetic field as well so there is a circle which is going forward which is going forward it's like this is it clear this is the concept if a charged particle moves in a uniform magnetic field with its velocity at some arbitrary angle any angle not 90 then we have two things the path is helix is it clear no problem in this you understood the concept that is it okay okay now uh, one more important thing that uh, i want to tell you people it is about a current carrying conductor a current carrying conductor inside a magnetic field so till now we have studied a charge moving inside a magnetic field. Now we have a current carrying conductor inside a magnetic field. Fine. So remember the first thing. When a current carrying conductor, for example, this is a conductor, okay? And in this conductor, some current is flowing. Fine. When the current is flowing in this conductor, that means charges are flowing, correct? So those charges will again experience a force. When they experience the force, therefore this conductor will experience the force. Fine. So how do you want to obtain that expression? Remember, the force experienced by a current carrying conductor is given by current times the length cross V. So that means the expression is I L B but sine of theta. This is the angle. This is the magnitude. This is the force. Current times the length times the magnetic field times sine theta. The previous expression was charge times the velocity, isn't it? But this time it is current times the length times the magnetic field multiplied by sine of theta. Is that clear? So that means when a current carrying conductor is placed inside a magnetic field, so what you have to do, it will again experience a force. The expression of that force is given by this and you have to check the direction. So how do you check the direction? I will give you the idea. See, if the negative charge is flowing like this, which what will be the direction of the positive charge? If it is going from this is A and this is end B. If the negative charge is flowing from B to A, that means the electrons are flowing. What is the direction of the positive charge? Yes. What will be the direction of the positive charge? Will the positive charge be like this? Yes, it will be the opposite. Therefore, the current has this direction. Okay. So what do you have to do? You have to again use your right hand. 
But now, what you have to do, start from L or the direction of current and go towards B. From L to B or from I to B. Is that clear? Is that clear? Or from V, the velocity of the positive charge, positive charge towards B. Is that clear? So that means in this case, the magnetic field is in, is it? And the positive charge is going like this. So you have to check the direction of current, fine? The direction of current is this and the magnetic field is inward. So you go like this and you start from V and go towards B. What is the direction? Up, is it? V to B. So it is up. So therefore, the magnetic force is upwards. Is that clear? Is this clear? Easiest thing that you will ever do. Again, the same thing, just like a charge. That time I told you use it from velocity to B. This time from current to B. But because the current is the direction of the motion of the positive charges, so the velocity of the positive charges can again be treated in the same manner. So velocity is like this. The magnetic field in this case is inwards. Therefore, we have something like this. You start from B, you go towards B, therefore it is up. That, that is why the magnetic force is up. Is it clear? We will have a small quiz and that will be it. So the expression again, I'm telling you it is ILV sine of theta, where I is the current, L is the length, B is the magnetic field and theta is the angle between the length and the magnetic field. Is that clear? And the direction is given by the right angle. Fine? The same thing that I told you. Okay, we have three cases and this will be it. We will finish the class. Come on, tell me. The first case, the, the magnetic field is up. The current carrying conductor is like this and the direction of the current is like this. Fine. The question is what will be the direction of the force? Yes. Which hand? Right hand. Start from velocity. Go towards magnetic field. So first of all, magnetic field is up and the velocity is towards right. Is it clear? Is it like this? So we start from B and we go towards B. We start from B and we go towards B. The direction is? So that means the force will be like this. This will be the force along Z axis. Is it clear? That means force is outwards. Clear? What about this? Where is the magnetic field? Inwards. The magnetic field is inwards. What is the direction of the current? Yes? Is it like this? So what we are going to do again? V cross B. V cross B. Where is the thumb going? So is this the direction? Is this the direction of the force? Yes? In this case it is outwards, correct? Okay, tell me what about the direction here? Here, here. Yes. Magnetic field is out. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Magnetic field is there. Magnetic field is positive x. Okay. Positive x axis. It's here. The current is out of the paper. So the current. Conductor is like this. So that means this is the conductor and the magnetic field is here. This is the case. Something like this. Yes, the current is going out. See, current is out of the paper. It's going like this. And the magnetic field is there. What will be the direction of the force experienced? Come on, tell me. You again have to use what? The right hand. How do you use it? Velocity is this. And magnetic field is this. Correct? This is the magnetic field. This is the velocity. The direction of current is the direction of velocity. Important. So you do the same thing. Like this. You close it, curl it, the thumb is going. So the force experienced by this conductor, so this conductor won't stay like this, this will go up. Is that clear? So the force on this conductor is upwards. Is there any doubt over this? Or the direction of the force? Yes? No? You just have to use your right hand rule, that is it, class. Fine? Solve this numerical and We'll finish the case. Solve this question.
A straight wire carrying 3 ampere of current is placed in a uniform magnetic field. The magnetic field is given directed perpendicular to the wire. So the angle between the wire and the magnetic field is 90. Okay, so we can write it down. Angle is 90 degrees. Now there are two parts of the question. First, find the magnitude of the magnetic force on a section of the wire having a length of 14 centimeters. Can we do this? And then explain why you can't determine the direction of the magnetic force from the information given in the problem. So we can discuss that later. First of all, do this the first part. Come on, tell me if there is a that. We have to find the force, the magnitude of the force. Okay? We have to find the magnitude of the force. Come on, tell me. The length is given, having a length of 14 centimeters. What is the expression for the force? Yes. Current times length times sine of angle. Is it? What is the angle? 90. So put in the values. Current is 3. Length is 0 0.14. Magnetic field is 0 0.28. Sine 90 is 1. So this will be the answer. What is the answer? Tell me. Um, Zero point five three. Zero point five three, sir. This is the force? Yes. This is the magnitude of the force. Fine. But the question, the second part of the question is explain why you cannot determine the direction of the force. Why can't we say what is the direction of the force? Although we know if you have to evaluate the direction of the force, we have to use which hand? The right hand rule. Is it? So when we use the right hand rule, we start from the length or the current and then we go towards the magnetic field. In any case, why can't we determine the direction here? Come on, tell me. Zero point? Handa. 3 times 0 0.14 times 0 0.28 What is it? How much? One one? Ah. Is that clear? Can you tell me, Tagri, why can't we determine the direction? Why? To determine the direction of the force, we have to use which hand? The right hand. But for that, we need to know the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field, isn't it? Now, reread the question. He is saying a straight wire carrying some current is placed in a uniform magnetic field and they are perpendicular. He's just saying they are perpendicular. And the perpendicular can be like this. Isn't it? It can be like this. It can be like this. It can be like, it can be anything, isn't it? So, although they are like this, but we do not know, is it along Z? Is it along X? Is it along Y and X? Is it like this, Y and Z? We don't know that, right? Because we do not have the actual direction. All we know is they are perpendicular. But perpendicular can be like this, it can be like this, it can be like this, it can be like this, anything. This is also perpendicular, right? So we cannot come up because the question doesn't have information about the actual direction of the current and the magnetic field. Is that clear? That is the reason we cannot come up with the direction. Although the magnitude of that force is not 0 0.117 newtons. Is this clear? Yes? Try to solve one question from... Yeah, it is correct. You, you can also find, uh, just try to solve this and we will stop the class. A magnetic force acting on a wire that is perpendicular to a 1.5 Tesla uniform magnetic field is 4.4 Newtons. So we have the force, how much is it? 4.4 Newtons. We have the magnetic field, how much is it? 1.5 Tesla. What is the angle? Yes? 90. 
90 degree very good if the current in the wire is 5 amperes so we know the current as well it is 5 amperes okay the question is what is the length so we have to find the length of the wire can you do this Length is zero point. Anyone else? Correct. So this is it. Is there any doubt about this? So I will give you a brief introduction or the idea about a motor. Now when you talk about electrical motors, they are using the same principle. There are wires inside a magnetic field. And when you plug the motor on, current flows in those wires, is it? When current flows in those wires, what will happen? They will experience a force. So due to which the motor rotates. And when it rotates, it helps you to take water from your first store to your to fill your tanks it helps you to do a lot of things like move the fan move your transformers move your generators everything fine so this is one of the principles of a dc motor current flows that current carrying conductor is placed inside a magnetic field when that magnetic field is put on what happens it experiences a force and that force helps you to do a lot of things because you are able to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and that mechanical energy is used to take water from lower heights to higher regions fine and anything your car works something like that is that fine is it clear so i'll stop here this is all about what we have studied till now i will not discuss further because i don't want to put something on compulsion basis fine that is it. This is our last class. Thank you so much.